quite a dynamic person. Uh, she has a lot going on for us. I'm glad that we were able to coax her down here to give a talk for you guys. She's written three books, uh, Yampa Valley Visions for the Joy of Wildflowers, which she self-published so you can find those online. And then she also, with Mary O'Byrne, published Edible and Medicinal Plants in the Rocky Mountains. And if you're into that kind of stuff, this is a great book. I think it's the best book out there on the market for this area. It's really, really useful. Great photos, a lot of anecdotes and stuff like that. So I, I highly recommend it. Um, I did, you know, I, I have a quotation on the back, of course, but I don't get any, any kickbacks for this. Um, one of the best books out there. She's explored many remote little visited corners of the park range, which is the Mount Zirkle Wilderness, the flat tops, steps and canyons of Northwestern Colorado. These are some of the least explored mountains and valleys in our state. They have many affinities with the Pacific Northwest and the Great Basin. Karen was on the founding board of Yampa River Botanic Park and her help during the 2016 conference was essential. I got a tremendous amount of credit for the success of that conference, but it was really Karen behind the scenes that helped make it what it was. There was no way it would have happened without her help and her energy towards it. She also helped with the hikes in Durango uh, this year. She was great. We led a couple hikes together. And she was very, very helpful with that group of people. She also has been with Yampatika since its inception in 1992. For those of you that don't know about Yampatika, it's the largest outdoor education foundation specifically aimed at Northwest Colorado. And it does programs for both adults and children. Really nice that the Yampa River has that asset in Karen. When she's not leading hikes, uh, she's working for clients and gardens during the growing season. She maintains her own garden maintenance and installation company. A few people know Northwest Colorado as well as Karen, and she's helped me numerous times in locating special plants and sites. And recently she's been finding some range extensions for common Colorado alpines here in the front range, things that we don't necessarily think much about when we see them on Loveland Pass or Pikes Peak or Mount Evans, but she's been finding them in the flat tops. So it's kind of exciting because they're actually a, a range extension. That part of the state is so rugged and so little explored that she's made a couple big range extensions. Uh, you guys are in for a great treat. The photography and story alone will inspire you to visit uh, Punyote, Karen and I's favorite corner of Colorado. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Karen. and Thank you very much. Okay, so did I just hit the arrow? Yeah, it's uh, actually. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, awesome. And am I going to have to stand right here? Uh, so that was here, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. I'll try. <laughs> we'll see what I can do. This is pretty exciting. I see a lot of uh, familiar faces. So um, it's great to be here. I had a very exciting drive over the passes to get here. Um, but so what I, I titled my presentation, Plants and Our Sense of Place, because like Mike said, he, by the way, he gave me this huge head. So geez, um, I was born and raised in Schemo Springs in the Yampa Valley. And I spent my whole life there. And being a fellow plant nerd, um, as you guys can probably appreciate, that's how I define myself, is by the plants that I find. And I, as you can probably tell, am a pretty hyper person. I do a lot of um, pretty extensive hiking and camping and backpacking throughout the region. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you on um, a tour through a few different mountain ranges just surrounding our area. That's me and my dog. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna start with a little tiny red star, that's Steamboat. So that's in the Yampa Valley. I'm gonna start in the north of the Boer Range. Um, it's kind of rolling terrains, real beautiful areas. We're gonna go over to the Rabbit Ears Range to the right, that kind of east-west range. 
up to the park range. And then we're gonna end up down in the, in the flat tops, that big round circle down there. And as I said here, this, this is my, my sense of place. This is where I explore. This is what I love. And this is where I get a, 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 just such a sense of peace. Mm -hmm. So if you're ready, put on your naked boots. I'm probably sitting on the remote. I don't know. So the Sarvis Creek Wilderness is in the northern part of the Gore Range. And it was made a wilderness area just a few years, years ago. And the main reason is, is because it is just so wild. There's not many roads going through it. It's a beautifully spectacular kind of rolling terrain with very, very um, diverse areas. It's also very lush. And I call this orchid heaven. Um, in our area, on one hike up along Sarvis Creek, uh, I can find eight species of orchids, multiple species of ericaceous plants, really incredibly interesting through there. These are cute little rattlesnake plant or plantain orchid. You can see his little friends on there too. Um, beautiful leaves. The leaf is what gives it its name, rattlesnake plantain, the, the kind of uh, beautiful modeling on the leaves. And then the striped coral root. So all my life, I would go up to a spotted coral root and I would look at it and say, come on, you've got to be a striped coral root this time, right? Um, I finally found one up Sarvis Creek and it was such a cool find and I, I keep finding it up there again and again. So, so beautiful, beautiful orchids up there in that area. Another one, of course, is the white bob orchid, which is ho hum hum, but oh my God, it's still so beautiful. Smells divine. And then I love having these two on the same page because, you know, the white bob orchid needs that, that wetland areas. And then the piparia, the, the rain orchid, I mean, dry as a bone. It'll be right under the oak trees, dry as a bone. So what, you know, a difference is you're walking along the trail being able to see these different orchids. But this is the highlight of the whole trip. So this is the broadleaf twig blade. And this is the only place I have ever seen it. I am sure, according to the maps, it's in other areas of Colorado and you might have seen it. But um, to get to this, so, little spring coming down, just a tiny little riffle, maybe about a foot wide. And at the bottom, it kind of spreads out and there's lady ferns just covering the area. So to actually see these, you have to pick up the lady ferns, look underneath, and these guys are about an inch to two inches tall, just tucked in underneath those lady ferns. Wow, what a find, huh? Yeah. And then we find some ericaceous stuff. Um, the, the pink winter green is fairly common in the wetter areas. It gets a little taller. And then the two on the right um, grow together. And the, the um, Pichisawa is a ground cover for this area. It just covers the ground with this beautiful, shiny, evergreen leaf um, that will be there even in the spring when we go in. And then there's cute little side bells that kind of grows in there as well. Also, Ericaceous, one of the pyrolas, or old bill is now. Then this is another fun find. Um, you can notice I have not quite gotten in, in flower. I'm still going to get it in flower one of these days, but every time I go up there, it's not quite in flower. Um, this is the white vein wintergreen I all picked up. And uh, oh, it, it's, it's a beauty. So it it's in little clumps along, just along the side of the trail. And it's those leaves that just, just capture your eye as you're going by. Red on the undersides with those beautiful venation. Okay, then we go over to the rabbit ears range. Um, so we just went up just a little bit north. Now remember this range runs east to west. All the other ranges run north to south. This one runs east to west. And it, compared to the, the Gore Range and the other ones we're gonna talk about, this is volcanic. So you can see there on the right, the cute little ears, right? You see it, that's why, that's how the, the, path, the whole area got its name. Um, those are the rabbit ears. They're a little bit narrower now because one of the ears kind of split apart, but we still do have the ears. So this is like subalpine meadow heaven. Um, some of the most insanely beautiful subalpine meadows with the highest diversity you can find, I think in the state, maybe some areas around Telluride you can find, Chris, if you can find some better, but they're incredible. So we've got a huge diversity of plants, 
And what is interesting, let me just go back to that one slide. Look how different each meadow is. So we go from bees, which are a little moister. And then we go to the one on the left is, is kind of tucked in an aspen grove. It's a fairly large meadow in an aspen grove. And then that one on the right is a drier meadow. Look how different they all are. And if they're just all packed with plants, just packed with plants. So they're, they're pretty amazing. So that's why I call them the fireworks because they also bloom sometimes right around the 4th of July, depending on the snow. And then there's, there's another little funny anomaly in rabbit ears. Um, there is a sandstone ridge in there, which is kind of weird. And that's what this is. This is sandstone and quartzite. And um, so it has a totally different plant selection than all the other areas do. As you can see here, we've got the Oxytopus thericea and the, the, white, the, the blue, fl uh, blue flax up there. But man, in a good year, this place is stunning. Um, doesn't happen very often because it's very, very dry and it lives up to its name, Windy Ridge. Um, but in a good year like this, and oh, wait until you see the next one. Look at that. Oh, I mean, this covers the whole hillside, that whole ridge that we, it just covers the whole ridge. And it is, it, it's really impressive. So pretty special places up there. Um, the meadows are, are beautiful. They have these very unique drainages. Uh, so carved down through the volcanic rock are these very steep, steep canyons with waterfalls coming down. And it creates these very unique little habitats. And one, uh, one of my, well, it might not be my favorite plant because it really smells. That's why it gets the name, the musk monkey flower. But this is, not, this is not seen anywhere else in Colorado except up in our little section of the world up there. And this is everywhere there. I mean, you just look down at the ground and there's mats of this mimulus growing, growing everywhere. Just don't touch it because it's really gross. <laughs> we also have, so, I had to put this one in the left on there because this is one of my earliest memories. And this, we talked about sense of place. Um, our family would go up to Rabbit Ears Pass to go fishing. My brother and my brother and my dad would go off fishing in the little streams up there. And my mom and I would lay in the meadows and just look at the flowers. And every single time I came across one of the, the ladies' tresses, they have the sweetest aroma. And I would just lay there and just, get this aroma just wafting over me. So sense of place, you know, it, it, that's, that's part of me. And then of course the wood nymphs uh, in the conifer forest, the cutest little stars, um, not common. I find them in just little tiny pockets here and there along the way. And this is a really special site. Mike and I actually got to go hike this last year. Um, I've been going there for several years and I guess I didn't realize how really special and unique was. And I kind of mentioned it to Mike and he's like, oh my God, we gotta go there. Um, so we went there and um, it was kind of a wowzer moment. This is like a temperate rainforest area. It's super deep uh, valley and there's mossy glacial boulders everywhere and lichen hanging off the trees. You kind of get the idea. And then there's ferns everywhere. Um, and like I said, I didn't know what a wowzer this was, but it was a really special place. So the oak ferns and the holly fern, um, as well as lady ferns and, and a couple others that were really, really unique. Okay, so now we're gonna, we're gonna leave our fireworks and we're gonna go to a little different area. We're gonna go to the Swiss Alps of the Northwest. We're gonna head up into the Zirkles. So in the park range, which is that range running north to south, uh, which eventually heads up into Wyoming, um, is uh, the Mount Zirka Wilderness Area. And this is the highest point, so a little over 12,000 feet. I know we don't have tall mountains where we live, but they're beautiful. Okay, they're just as beautiful. And this has a very, very different kind of flora because of, again, its geology. So this is very beautiful metamorphic, metamorphic igneous rock. So this is fold fault type stone. And I'm going to start us down at the bottom though. I'm going to start us in the subalpine forest, the spruce fir forest, because here is where we have some of our gems, I think. Um, and this is one. 
Have you guys ever had a chance to see this? Oh, you've got to come up and see this because they're absolutely beautiful. It's the only place in Colorado we have it. It is kind of a Pacific Northwest holdover. Um, this is our beautiful Pacific Trillium. Um, just a star of the area. And again, this is my sense of place. This is what, what I, I call home. The Jacob's Ladder is a common plant, but just such a beautiful, beautiful plant highlighting our forest. And then the one on the right, the pine drops. Wow, what a crazy plant, <laughs> right? Um, while I sat there photographing, I sat there for about a half an hour and just kind of watched this plant. And it had more pollinators coming to this. I, I was surprised. I just couldn't imagine an urn shaped, you know, flower like that having so many different pollinators to it. It was really fascinating. So we're still in the forest and we come across, I, so first off, unless you really look for this guy, you're not gonna see it because they're always knotted over and you, you just don't see them. So what I usually look for is the leaves. The leaves are pretty big and pretty obvious. And then you're like, oh yeah, there, there is something under there. You kind of tip it up and there's that beautiful, that, that beautiful little lady slipper. And the fairy slipper orchid, this is pretty common too all over Colorado, but such a find in our subalpine forest. And then, <laughs> yeah, this one's fun. Okay, so you could still be in the forest and see this. Um, it does grow there, but as you come out of the forest into the boulder fields, this covers the boulder fields in certain areas. This is, this is our white azalea. And again, this is a Pacific Northwest holdover, kind of like the trillium. Um, found only in our little part of the world. And it's just a beauty. I would love to get this in the trade. Wouldn't that be fun? Really love to get this in the trade with that cute little pink dot on the top, the top um, petal there. It's a beauty. Okay, then we start going up out of the subalpine forest. Um, we had a major fire here in 2002. Uh, changed the landscape, changed the landscape. As you notice here, we're not getting uh, conifer revegetation. So a lot of our higher elevation forests are not coming back. They're reverting to uh, meadow and we're not getting a lot of revegetation of conifers there. So we'll see what happens there. And of course we go up a little bit higher. We start getting into crumb holes. Um, kind of our trees are getting shorter, denser, and then we get up even higher out of the, the forest into some of the most beautiful scenery. And this is, this, so in the park range, especially in the Zirkles, we have a lot of these high meadows, I guess is what you call them, I'm not sure, bowls. And with these crystal clear streams running through them, um, you, can, you can see the type of stone, that metamorphic stone. And we're gonna take you up through that area. Oh yeah. I wouldn't need it. I want to be there right now. And then we're gonna we're gonna find a bunch of very, very beautiful plants along these these in these wet wetland areas, in these riparian areas. And again, this is fairly common uh, throughout Colorado, but up there in the wetness. Oh, I forgot to mention. So because the park range does run north to south, <clears throat> we are on the west edge of the Rocky Mountains. You know, those storms move in and they get stalled right there at the park range and they dump everything. And uh, we are at the park range. There is the area with the highest average precipitation in the state. I mean, we kind of battle it out with Wolf Creek down in the south in the San Juans, but we pretty much are consistently the area with the most precipitation. So that's why I think we have some fairly unique plants in that area. Another very unique one that's found only in the very north little section right up there is our Lewis's monkey flower. And I mean, you can spot that one a mile away too. So between the prairie primrose and this one, they're very, very visible. So because it's wet, um, typically you're gonna find swamp willow and white bog orchids in wetlands around bodies of water. But what I always find up here is they are always in boulder fields, okay? And I think that's because of the wet. I think it's because it's enough moisture and they create these hummocks and these, these soiled areas on the cliff faces that we get a lot of these plants that normally are found in 
only very riparian areas growing in these boulder fields. Um, and they're, they just, they just beautiful um, accents to the boulders. And of course we have our paintbrush. That's a lot of focus, but um, we have our beautiful, beautiful paintbrush covers meadows up there in the, the bowls. And then this is, this is one of my favorites. If you can get up there early enough in the season, you'll see this guy. This is the Narcissus flower of the anemone. And uh, look at what it's growing. All those little pockets of soil through all the rocks right there. And uh, like I said, it's very early blooming, so you have to get up there just as the snow is melting. And then we come to our crowning glory, um, the, the rose crown and the king crown. And again, kind of like that orchid slide I showed you a while back. This is so cool because the rose crown is a riparian plant. It, it loves, loves, um, in, the, in the circles anyway, the areas where the snow is just melting, it creates these kind of flat areas where all the flat rocks sit like paving stones. It just loves it in there. And then of course the king's crown likes super dry rock cracks, boulders, whatever. And then they grow in such different areas. And of course, some of the cushion plants, you know, I, I don't see a lot, ton of cushion plants up in the circles. Um, I tend to see more in the flat tops. So, um, but this is, this is one of my treats is the paranychia because it's like, oh, is there a flower in there? Oh, I think there is, yeah. They're so cute. Oh yeah. And snow lover just does so well in the flat tops. Look at, look at where that one's growing, right in the moss right there. Man, they are just gorgeous. And then this is a fun one. It, this is a Vesia. And um, does this grow elsewhere? It's pretty common. Okay. But I, in the circle, this is the only place I find it in, in our whole area is in the circles. I don't find it anywhere else, but it's always in stone. I've never seen it in meadows. I've never seen it in boulder fields. I always see it in stone like that. And what a nice contrast. <sighs> Yeah, I had to put that one in. <laughs> so this is the alpine lady fern. So, you know, we're used to those beautiful lady ferns down in the riparian area. We'll lose at the top of the tough lady ferns up in the alpine. Okay, we're gonna move on to our next area. All righty, because we're gonna move into probably my favorite, my favorite area. This is where I spend most of my time is in the flat tops. And the flat tops geologically are very, very unique. They, they were a big dome that just pushed up. And as they were pushing up, the fault lines opened and the lava was just oozing out. So basically there's a big kind of upwelling of sandstone and other sedimentary rock. And then on top of that's a huge cap of igneous rock on top. And this igneous rock is extremely mineral rich and we're gonna see what it creates. So it created a huge, huge, huge dome like plateau that's just miles, miles long. But again, we're gonna start down towards the bottom. We're gonna start in the subalpine meadows. And as you see, similar to the rabbit ears range, this is in the, the flat tops, subalpine meadows, just beautiful, stunning diversity there. Um, this is our orange sneezeweed. I just think that's a pretty picture. And we have my, my, um, my mother always called these the DYC meadows, the damn yellow composite meadows, because they were <laughs> so hard to identify. But so we have the golden, or the, the orange sneezeweed with some scarlet gelia. And on the other side, we have pyrocoma. And what's interesting is these meadows are on very different areas. So the one on the left is in a very protected, huge bowl surrounding um, Stillwater and other lakes. So it's, it's moist and protected. And the pyrocoma is on a very exposed slope, much drier slope. So we get very, very different meadows and very different plants from that. This is another one of my super fun. This, this, when I see this coneflower, I know exactly where I am in the flat tops because there's only one spot where I've ever really found it is in this one kind of dry meadow over there. So it's really fun seeing that, seeing that cone flower. And then, yeah, so similar to the park range, the flat tops are also on the Western edge of the Rockies and they also stop a lot of precipitation coming in from the West. 
So they are also fairly moist. And um, one of the highlights, if you can find these meadows of columbine, um, I don't see a huge amount of just all columbine like, like this, but they're they're just beautifully stunning when you can find them. And you notice the different colors. So we have some darker ones, kind of have some white ones towards the and then off to the right, um, then I'm not showing are some yellow and pink ones. So there's quite the variety in there. And then we're getting up into some different habitat. We start getting into gentian heaven. Yay. Um, the little guy on the right actually is up in the tundra. I, I kind of got a little bit out of place, but is out in the tundra and it's about as big as my little pinky. Um, that's our moss gentian, pygmy gentian. And then the perennial fringe gentian is one that I only see in the flat tops. Elsewhere? Again, see, there you go. And I only see it in the flat top. So to me, it's a very special plant because I only see it there. Uh, the Paris gentian is, oh gosh. I mean, how can you do better than gentian blue, right? I mean, that's just an incredible color. So now we're, I wanted to show you this picture to show you, to give you an idea of kind of the, the makeup of the flat top. So you can see the, the plateaus, the, the, the high flat plateaus with the, the cliffs coming off of it. But then we have these long, long meadows, rich, rich meadows where the glaciers carved and carved and etched. So what they left behind was a lot of lakes, um, alpine lakes and a lot of glacial till. But what we're standing on right here, I'm gonna show you the next picture. What we're standing on right here is the base of the cliffs and the cliffs are ledges. And if you're really good, you can climb up them. So we're gonna go up the cliffs. So that's kind of what they look like. And so we were right down there. If you look kind of down the bottom right-hand corner, those were the columbine right down there. And we climbed up that cliff face and each ledge, oh my God. And it's so interesting because they're all different. So this one has a little spring to the upper left-hand corner. You can see the Mertensia growing up there. So it has a different plant combination than other ledges that I go on that have like maybe more facilia and penstemon. And this one has different plant combinations on it than some of the other ledges. So re really, really interesting. Now notice the stone. This is all that volcanic stone. And we're gonna start taking a little closer look at some of the stone. Oh, I had to get this in there just for my, yeah. Sorry about the bear in that one right there. Everybody thinks my dog looks like a bear. Um, so you can see in the far distance on the right-hand side, those ledges were where we just were, okay? We were up on those ledges. And then we climbed to the top and we came down this boulder field. I had been down this boulder field so many times and seen this penstemon in there. And I'm kind of like, okay, my botanizing skills, well, I, I have, I have the ability to concentrate for about two seconds and then I move on. I, I'm not very good at that. So I saw the penciman, I've taken pictures and I just happened to send this to Mike one time. He was like, oh my God, you've got to send this in. This is Penciman Harborii. So this is one of the new ones, right? That were that extended in cinema range. So anyway, so I'm gonna send more pictures this way. So we're, we're kind of in the boulder fields now. So we've got wallflower up there. This is one of the places where you will find the most extensive to me that I've seen um, displays Old Man of the Mountain ever. I mean, look at that one on the right. When it's in a good year, it just covers the ground in yellow here in the boulder fields and up on the top as well. And here's what the rock looks like. Yeah. So again, it's this really mineral rich rock and it just gets covered in these lichens that are insanely beautiful. Um, I can't get enough of them. Um, I mean, I could take pictures of that all day. It's just really beautiful. And in those rocks grow all sorts of plants. Uh, it's very volcanic, so it has a lot of holes. It has a lot of cracks, allows a lot of moisture in there. So we get a lot of diverse plants growing in that stone. And we get the columbine. Oh, look at that little, was that lanceolata? Sure. What the heck? Okay, we're gonna call it lanceolata. Um, but, uh, oh, this is the other range extension one. This is Drava crassa. Again, I don't do Dravas. 
kind of like, I don't do pants to men. So I took pictures and Mike saw these and was like, oh yeah, this is another one. So pretty fun. And then we're getting still kind of into the boulder field, some of the richer areas. So we have our cute little alpine chicken tails, love those. And then look at that Selena. I mean, you know, you see, you see cushions of this that get, you know, kind of big, but up there, they, I mean, you can just find whole fields of moss campion up there, um, spectacular. And then we're getting up onto the tippy top now. Okay, so now we're getting up onto the ridge. Here's our silky facilia with um, with a snow field. And I put this in because these snow fields are perennial. So they hang out on these cliff ledges. And what you'll see below are those beautiful green tiers going down. And because the snow stays there year round, um, it's constantly providing moisture to these green tier tiers and terraces going down, just like on the other side, kind of where I was. And so we get these, um, I call them the hanging gardens. I think that's kind of what they are. Ah, look at those guys. Aren't they so pretty? Um, so we got the, the old man, the mountain, and some sky pilot, and then that stunningly beautiful lichen. Here's a little closer up. And then this is a this is this is probably my all-time favorite plant. I love forget-me-nots. But this is not the little cushion alpine forget-me-nots. This is our Myosota asiatica. Um, again, other places, it's pretty common. Oh, cool. Well, there you go. So come up and see it because it's really pretty. And then this is what it looks like in the in the fields. So this would just go on, you know, remember the plateaus? That would just go on and on and on and on and on and on. Yeah, very pretty. Well, there we go. Oh, there's that bear again. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I love putting this one in. Um, it gives you an idea of the expansiveness of those plateaus and then the sheer cliff faces that are, that are there. Now, where we're gonna go next is if you look straight across the way, you see a snow field that's kind of coming down in a little bowl. Well, that's where we're gonna go next. And you can get it from the top, but I usually climb up the cliff face to get to that because there's, there is um, a plant which I have never been able to get a picture of because my camera broke when I was up there, but we'll get there. So this is what it looks like. Now you can see my dog sitting right in the very center on that little piece of snow there. You can see how big that is, how big that snow pieces are. This is really disappointing though, because I, this is from last year. And this is the first time I have ever seen the snow break off this snow field. Um, this snow field's been there for my whole life. I've never seen it diminish. And this is the first year I have seen pieces break off. And it just broke my heart um, because all of this basically, yeah, and basically it feeds that lake down there. Plus this really interesting repairing area down there where I found the Parnassia Kotzebue. Um, like I said, my camera broke when I was up there and I didn't get a picture of it, but it is there. So, um, and then up on the plateau itself, just to kind of show you some of the views of the plateau, we've got some beautiful sky pilot and then um, show you some of the other perennial snow fields off on the right there as well. Oh yeah, yeah. This is why I go up there in the fall, the Arctic Gentian. There, are, in, in certain areas, you, you just almost can't step without stepping on them. They're just so abundant. And there's a couple of mountain, I can't really call them mountain ranges because they're not really mountain ranges, mountain flat plateaus, <laughs> I guess you call it, where these are just everywhere. They're so beautiful. Um, and then another one is on dwarf gentian. You know, I mean, usually we see these as much taller, but up there, they just, they kind of cover the ground in areas. Okay, this is the one I wasn't sure on. So I only found this once ever on one mountain. I never saw it again. What do you think, you agree? Yeah, it's a beauty, isn't it? Yeah, it is just gorgeous. So that was a fun find. I, so I mentioned the cushion plants. And if you can imagine that long plateau, kind of narrow, cliffs dropping on either side, 
along the edge of the plateau on the side, this just is all along the edges on the side. And it just goes on and on and on and on forever and ever. These beautiful cushion plant strips, I guess you would call them. And uh, I mean, I like them even when they're not in bloom. I think they have this beautiful texture and color. And then we got these cute little willows. Um, we got the snow willow and the alpine willow. This is, this is kind of a major ground cover up there, um, especially on some of the more kind of north facing slopes. So that's where we're heading. We're kind of coming off the plateau top. We're heading off kind of on a north facing slope and we're gonna start seeing a few different plants as we get over there. And the specialties on these north facing slopes are saxifrage. So we've got the spotted saxifrage. That's very common up there. We've got the, I call it the whip, whiplash saxifrage, um, is fairly, fairly common up there. Um, very specialized areas though. So you can see the rock there. These are the stripes of boulders that come down off the ridge tops, uh, kind of like frost heave type push up like that. And the saxifrages are in these little boulder stripes that come down, just full of mosses and full of saxifrage. Another one is the, the gold bloom or the golden saxifrage. Okay. And then we have the weak saxifrage on the left, which is a really sad name for a saxifrage. Would you like to be called the weak saxifrage? God, come on. And then the nodding saxifrage on the right with the bulbils. And then the tufted alpine saxifrage is fairly common up there as well. So, so that is super fun to find these, these little pockets of saxifrage up there. So that is pretty much the end. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. I would like to um, thank Mike for his incredible patience with me, for constantly sending him photos and IDing everything for me. And I just want to let you know that all, all the names have been updated to Jennifer's um, new flora. So um, that's, that's where I got all the names from. So I would be happy to answer any questions if anybody has any questions. Yeah, and this, uh, this is called the sawtooth. Um, so that's Pyramid Peak right over there. Um, it, it's just called the sawtooth. It's the, it, it just kind of eroded off into this really, 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 really straight up and down, very relation to the same boat. So this is going to be right up there. Up there. Right, up, right up there. Yeah, and then that's not the same as Devil's No, Devil's Cog would be back that way. Yeah. So the sawtooth, okay, so the sawtooth, let's see if I can kind of get an idea of where the sawtooth goes over towards, well, I mean, Stillwater would be basically right behind me. Stillwater Lake would be right behind me from where I'm sitting. Kind of pointing towards Hayden. Almost, almost towards Hayden. Let's yeah. see, can we see? Yeah, it's pretty hazy out there. There's the bear's ears right there. Yeah. Right up there in the corner, that's the bear's ears. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Gorgeous. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me down. I appreciate it. Any other did I make you homesick? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you all very much. Do any of you have any questions for her? Very good. We'll be sending up uh, the next uh, newsletter. We'll have more information about uh, signups for the uh, 
what we still need for the plant sale. And we that's going to be our next meeting. We'll be at the plant sale. So we look forward to, to seeing you all. Thank you.